Since past few years, there is a new way of developing software apps using microservices architecture. That's when all the buzz around containers and container orchestration has increased. But we have been developing and using these large software apps even before most of us born. So what is that old software architecture we used even before microservices? And what are the disadvantages of it that led to shift our focus to microservices? Hello and welcome to Monolithic Architecture. My name is Srinath Challa. I'm a certified Kubernetes administrator. So in next few minutes, I'll try my best to get you up to speed on monolithic architecture if you're new to this. So without any further delay, let's take a look at the things you'll be learning as part of this video. So coming to the primary objectives of this video, there are four major things that we'll discuss. First, we'll discuss about what is monolithic in general. This answer is straight out of Google search, but this will help you understand and connects dot to the next thing we are about to discuss. And that is, what is monolithic architecture in IT? Then we'll see some of the important advantages and disadvantages of monolithic architecture. And finally, we'll discuss about one of the major challenge that led to shift our focus from monolithic architecture to microservices architecture. With that, let's get started with our first topic in this video, and that is what is monolithic in general? If you just Google what is monolithic, here's the definition you will get. So to make it easy for you, I have highlighted the text that you might want to focus on. So monolithic in general is something which is single large block, indivisible, hard to change, inflexible, and immovable. So that briefly explains at a high level about monolithic architecture in IT and its characteristics as well. And now let's see the overview of what is monolithic application in IT. So what is monolithic application in IT? It is an application built based on monolithic architecture. It is self-contained, which means it contains all parts of applications packaged and deployed together. So to simplify this, you can imagine this is something like a big container where all software components of an application are assembled together and tightly packed and deployed as a single unit. Imagine that you have developed an application on Java platform. Then you can package them using various formats such as ER, VAR, and JAR accordingly, and which is then finally deployed as a single unit onto the application server. So in business terms, you can say that all different business services are packaged together as a single unit, which is tightly coupled. So typically, when you look at the monolithic architecture, it primarily consists of three tiers. It has a presentation layer on the top. Underneath that, we have an application tier and all the way bottom, we have a data tier. So for those who are not familiar with these tiers at a high level, the presentation tier is the front end layer of the three tier architecture. It is primarily a user interface of a web application. This tier is often built with web technologies such as HTML, JavaScript, CSS, or through other popular web development frameworks. And this tier communicates with other two tiers in the bottom using API calls. Now moving on to the next tier under presentation, which is application tier. This is where you have all the business logic. It is often written in Java, .NET, C Sharp, Python, C++, or some more related languages. Finally, coming to the last tier in the monolithic architecture, which is data tier. This is where all the data is stored. And this data is accessed by application layer via API calls. This tier consists of database technologies such as MySQL, Oracle DB, Microsoft SQL Server, MongoDB, and Redis are some of the examples of these database technologies. 
So that's a high level overview of the monolithic architecture and its tiers. So all these layers are packaged and deployed together as a one single unit. And that is one of the main reason why it is called as monolithic architecture. Now let's look at the, some of the example of simple monolithic application. When you take a bookstore web app, it primarily consists of four components. They are customer accounts, payments, inventory, and shipping. So if developer develops this application based on monolithic architecture, then all these four components will be developed together, which may be interdependent on each other and deployed onto a web server as a one single unit. So that's about the monolithic architecture. And with this architecture style of developing an application, there are some advantages and more than that, there are disadvantages. And now it's time to see some of the advantages and disadvantages of monolithic architecture in next slide. First, let's take some of the important advantages of monolithic architecture. First, since it is a single unit of deployment, so there is only one application to test and deploy overall. So monolithic applications are simple to develop and deploy. Next, we have been developing monolithic applications since almost two to three decades. It is mature and old. So IDEs and other development tools are designed in sync with monolithic architecture in mind. So these are the two primary advantages of monolithic architecture. Now let's move on to the disadvantages of it. As some of you may have guessed it right already, this list is certainly bigger than advantages. First disadvantage is applications built with monolithic design are often very large. If the application is small, then there are no problems. Then it will be easy to develop and maintain. In case if the application is large and has a multiple components to it, then there will be a situation where developer might get lost between business requirements, components, and its code. And most likely there is a scope for no single developer or even a group of developers understands the entirety of the application, especially for those developers who have recently joined the team. And it will take a lot of time to understand an application. Next disadvantage is these monolithic applications will get lock in with initial decisions around the technologies they have developed this application. Even if there are better technologies and languages and tools come over a period of time to solve the business problems. But unfortunately, these monolithic applications will have to stick with their initial technologies and initial decisions that they have taken at the beginning. Next disadvantage is when developing software applications, there is no one size fits all principle here. Meaning let's imagine that there are multiple components inside the application and there might be a situation where you feel that one technology is best suited to one component is not suited to other components. However, this monolithic design will restrict you to use single development stack across. For example, use it either Java or .NET. Next disadvantage is frequent deployments are not practical because there are various application components linked together in a monolithic application. As a result, it requires a coordination of many developers and even departments who are responsible for these components. It may take hours or even days to schedule a deployment and test new features and bug fixes. And the final disadvantage in this list is scaling of monolithic applications can often be a very challenging. Since this is deployed as a single unit of app, not an individual components. So you had to scale the entire application. Let's assume that you want to scale a single shipping component in our example but that is not possible in this case. So for that to scale single shipping component, you need to scale the entire component. That's certainly not what we wanted, right? 
So these are some of the important disadvantages of monolithic architecture. Now there is one big challenge with monolithic architecture and we'll see that in next slide. Even though we have so many drawbacks of monolithic application, it has served well for over three decades for us. Large organizations have used this way of packaging and deploying applications for decades and have developed effective ways of dealing with these shortcomings. But this was before the internet brought new challenges. And one of the challenge is unpredictable nature of user demands on the application. Imagine that you have an internal web application just inside your company. And there are about 10,000 of your company employees using it every day. So you know exactly how many of your company employees you have when they are working and for how long. So based on this criteria, you can provide just enough resources for these applications to perform best. So if more staff joins the company, you know this in advance and can add more resources to the server where this application is running to keep up with the best performance possible. So this is quite contrast when it comes to the post-internet era. Now let's imagine that your company has an external website where they sell products online like Amazon.com or Walmart.com. In this scenario, you don't know exactly how many people will be using your website today. All you can make is good estimation based on some historical data that you have. But that cannot be certain, right? So if you look at the sales during holiday season, you see a rapid jump in visitor numbers as a result of some marketing campaign or a social media buzz. So as soon as you see that spike in traffic, you need to immediately scale the application resources. Unfortunately, you do not have luxury of few weeks notice. So if you just fail to provide those resources, it obviously reduces the performance of your applications, which might even cause it to crash. This is exactly used to happen during the early days of internet, where web applications were monolithic and when there were surgent visitor numbers, it would slow down the applications and possibly stop it altogether. The primary issue here is resources cannot be provided quickly enough to meet the demand. So the main disadvantage of monolithic architecture pattern is it does not go well with scaling resources dynamically as and when needed. Now it's time to think about new way of developing application. And this is what it leads to microservices. And that brings me to move on to the next presentation. But before we move on to the next video, let me summarize the, some of the important points that we discussed so far in this video. So coming to summary, first we discussed about what is monolithic in general. So generally a monolithic is a single large block, which is indivisible, hard to change, inflexible, and immovable. So these are the exact characteristics of monolithic applications. Next, we discussed about what is monolithic application architecture in IT. So software applications developed based on monolithic architecture is called as monolithic applications. All components of monolithic applications are packaged and deployed together as a single unit of deployment. Next, we discussed about two primary advantages of monolithic applications. First, monolithic applications are easy to develop and deploy because of single unit of deployment. Second, we have been developing monolithic application since quite a few decades, almost since two to three decades. So the support of IDEs and other application development tools has a good support. Next, we discussed about five disadvantages of monolithic architecture. First, monolithic applications are often very large. Then it is difficult to change the technology after we integrate it into the development. After that, frequent deployments are not possible. And finally, when it comes to scalability, we need to scale the entire application, even if our goal is to scale one single target component. So those are some of the disadvantages of monolithic applications that we discussed in this video.
And finally, we discussed one of the major challenge with traditional monolithic application, and that is dynamic scalability and flexibility, which are two most important things in current internet era. Unfortunately, monolithic applications are not ideal for scaling and flexible when there is a spike in demand. So, to address these problems of monolithic applications, now there is a different architecture that comes to help us. and that is microservices in that video we'll discuss what is microservices what are its advantages and disadvantages and how it differs from monolithic architecture and more a link to that video is provided in the description below finally thank you so much for watching this and i hope to see you in the next video